Good morning. Welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 316. I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph, on Ravelry, Facebook, and Instagram. Today is Tuesday, July 2nd. Happy belated Canada Day to our Canadian viewers. I hope you enjoyed a nice holiday weekend. And I will wish everyone from the United States a happy 4th of July holiday coming up this week. And if you have Friday off, then bonus points to you for getting a nice long weekend as well. Um, I hope it's safe. Stay, keep your face away from the fireworks. <laughs> Um, it's been almost three weeks since I've recorded. That wasn't an intentional break. Um, it's just been the nature of what's been happening in life right lately. <laughs> right lately? Yeah. Um, the week after I recorded last, I went to TNNA. Um, I did survive my bus trip, so thank you for your concern. But quite honestly, going Greyhound was no worse than some airline trips I've taken. So it was fine. It worked out really well. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about TNNA throughout the podcast. Um, anyway, there was TNNA. I had some family in town visiting, um, pretty unexpectedly, but it also has taken some time. And there's been a lot going on within our knitting community um, in general. And I'm going to start there. Um, I'm going to try to keep it brief because I know... It's something that I could probably talk about for a long time, but I want to keep it brief, but I don't want to dismiss it either because it's important. Um, so as always, there will be timestamps in the show notes. Um, if you choose to not watch this part, that's totally fine. That's up to you. Um, but I want to take a minute to um, share with you my um, where I stand on the whole Ravelry issue. Um, unless you have been on a complete media blackout over the last week or so, you are probably well aware of what's going on um, with the new policy that Ravelry implemented two Sundays ago, banning any support on their platform for Donald Trump or his administration. I chose to stand behind them in their decision um, for a number of reasons. It was not a... Uh, jumping on the bandwagon kind of decision on my part that's I've seen that bandied about um, not specifically with regard to me but in general with people who have come out in support of this I can only speak for myself um, I thought about it before I said anything but it didn't take me long to make my decision because of how I do feel about things number one I support Ravelry's decision to put this um, policy into effect because they are a private entity. Um, they are allowed to establish their terms of service and what they will allow and not allow on their platform. That is their right and I 100% agree with them having that right and I respect that. Um, I'm also choosing to stand behind the policy itself because it is a policy that is seeking to protect and provide a safe space for all members. And not all members have been able to enjoy that benefit. Um, I'm very thankful that the groups that I do take part in, um, including our Fiber Nymph Dye Works group, have always been very respectful um, and very inclusive. And I hope it stays that way. Um, and I hope if there is something else going on that I'm unaware of in our group that you'll bring it to my attention um, so that I can do what I can do as a moderator to deal with it. Um, that being said, even though I haven't witnessed it, um, I do truly believe that it has been a problem for other people um, in very harmful ways. And I do do respect Ravelry's intention and um, the steps they've taken to try to fix that problem. Do I think it is the most perfect solution? <laughs> no. Um, but I do believe it is a step in the right direction. I hope it will be refined and become even better over time. Um, 
it's not a once and done kind of thing. Um, they have spoken out more about it um, since issuing that policy. Um, most recently I read about the fact that they are going to shut down groups or they have been shutting down groups where um, these behaviors are still taking place, where moderators are basically not doing their job of moderating members who are violating those terms of service. And I think that's very interesting because, and again, this is just me speaking for myself, being a moderator of a group on Ravelry maybe doesn't seem like a big deal. It's like, I have a group. I'm the moderator of it. Let's all just chat and have fun. And hopefully, best case scenario, that's all you get to do. Um, you don't have to break up fights or try to defuse horrible situations. Um, again, I've never had to do that in any group that I've moderated. But I know not all moderators are so lucky. Um, <coughs> anyway, being a moderator of a group in Ravelry does mean that you need to be holding your members accountable. And so if that's not happening, I can understand why Ravelry might feel that they are justified in shutting down the group. Again, it's their platform. They have that right. So I guess the point of what I'm trying to say is I don't feel like Ravelry is unfairly calling people out just because they want to be vindictive or spiteful because they don't agree with them. Um, I think they are trying to enforce their terms of service and um, their policy against hate speech. And it's suddenly starting to become much more public that they're doing that. I don't think it's anything new that they're doing. I think they're maybe trying to do it better than how they've done it in the past. Um, and again, I feel like that's a good thing. Okay, so that's where I'm at. I hope that's clear. <laughs> um, I recognize that not everybody agrees with me. And I will add one more thing because I've had conversations with people through emails um, and through direct messages on Instagram after I shared where I stand on this um, of people saying, I can't believe you're calling me a white supremacist. I'm not calling anyone a white supremacist. I don't believe that's what Ravelry is doing either. I realize that that's not how everyone interprets this policy, but personally, I don't interpret it that way. There is a huge difference between supporting something and being something. I know not everyone agrees with that statement either. Um, an, an imperfect example that I, I used or as a metaphor is like, I can support the Pittsburgh Steelers. That does not make me a Pittsburgh Steeler. It's a difference between a label, Pittsburgh Steeler, and a behavior, support. Ravelry is trying to address the behavior. They are not labeling. The only person, the only person or entity that they've really labeled as being um, active with white supremacy is Donald Trump and his administration. Okay, so that's where we're at. Because of this policy, obviously, Ravelry is not the place to discuss this, but I just want you to know that I'm more than willing to discuss this with you if you want to talk about it more. My email is always open, fibernymph at gmail.com. You are more than welcome to email me, tell me what you think, um, if you want to discuss it, whether you agree with me or especially if you don't agree with me, I'm happy to discuss that too. I'm not looking to get into any arguments. I am happy, however, to have respectful discourse about the subject. Um, that's all I can offer. But I just wanted to put that out there up front to let you know where I stand with all of this. It is not easy. It's very sad that we're even at this point, but you know what? We've been here for a very long time. The fact that it's just becoming public now and much more out in the open, that's what's new. It's never not been an issue um, of marginalized populations being attacked and um, targeted. You know, that's not new, unfortunately. Well, 
I, that probably didn't make sense. <laughs> no, unfortunately, it's not new. It's been around forever. That is what I'm trying to say. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop because I feel like uh, I could go off into the weeds on this topic for a long time, and that's not why we're here. But again, wanted to put that out there up front. Just to give you a rundown on what we're gonna be talking about for the remainder of today together, um, I've got a bunch of finished objects to share with you. I've got some works in progress. I have some spinning. Um, what else? I'm reading my notes. They're actually sitting across from me on the couch behind you um, because I've got so much stuff on the table next to me, which is where my laptop usually sits. So, if I'm looking past you, that's why. Um, let's see, spinning. And then we have some events that are going on in our group, in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group. We're gonna talk about those. I have an upcoming knit along that's going to be starting August 1st that I'm gonna tell you about because you might need some time to prepare for that if you wanna take part. And uh, what else? Summer of Us, I've got a little bit of chatter for that. And then we've got 10% and then I do have shop news, including some things that are gonna be going up in the shop that should be up in the shop by the time this video is published on YouTube. So all that coming up for you and your viewing pleasure. <laughs> Let's get started. Um, okay, so as I said, I went to TNNA. Um, that gave me a lot of knitting time, actually, because uh, I did take the bus, so I had all the travel time, and I did pretty much knit the whole time I was on the bus, both there and back. Um, when you're a TNNA and you're taking classes, it's perfectly acceptable to be knitting while you're in class, which is lovely, um, as well as in other, you know, things going on there. And I had a lot of time in my hotel room, which was glorious. And so lots of knitting occurred. And that's what we're gonna talk about. And I'm going to show you a pair of socks that are finished. I actually did not finish these while I was away. I had to finish them once I came home and I'll explain why in a minute. So these are my splashes and pop socks. Uh, this is my Down Cellar Studio Splash Pad Party exclusive colorway for this summer which is still available in the shop. So if you are looking for this colorway, you can still order it through the end of July. Um, I'm doing it as a die to order. Um, you'll get it within two to three weeks after you order it. I do have a handful of skeins on different bases that are like the second skein of a set that I had, because you know, I dye my self-striping in sets of two. Um, so if somebody ordered one, then I have the second one usually waiting around, and then the next person who orders that base gets that skein, and they get it much quicker. Anyway, that to say, I do have some on hand that are ready to ship. I think Mountain Tweed, and maybe Bounce, I don't remember. But anyway, if you'd like it, you can order it from the shop. So. Uh, what can I tell you about these socks? I knit mine out of Bounce, my Bounce base, and I did um, a three by one rib, which is my thing lately. Two by one and three by one rib, I'm really enjoying. Um, I'm just so tired of just plain stockinette socks. Anyway, um, I did these cuff down, which is how I usually do my socks, and put in an afterthought heel. The first sock has been done for a while because I knit it up as a sample when I first came out with the colorway. So I started the second sock to work on at TNNA and that was great and I was going like gangbusters except I totally forgot to switch to stockinette on the sole um, once I got to the point where I would be putting my heel in. I did an afterthought heel. Um, I don't put waste yarn in when I do my afterthought heels. I just do a a regular traditional afterthought where you're putting, you know, you're just picking up the stitches and then snipping in between the two needles. Um, anyway, I forgot to, to switch to stockinette. And once, I was probably about down to here when I realized that I had made that mistake and I thought, ah, you know what, who cares? I, I'll just leave it. It's not, it's, it's gonna be on my foot. It's not like it's gonna really bother me. It came time for me to put my needle in for the heel. 
I could not figure out how to pick up the purl stitches. And it's so stupid, and I know I probably could have just looked it up on YouTube um, and found it, but I was in my hotel room, and I was brain dead at that point, and I'm like, I don't know. And what I ended up doing is I just ripped the foot back. I picked out the toe, ripped the foot back, and re-knit it the correct way. And I'm glad I did. It, it's it's better that I did it that way. So both socks are now the same. But that's the saga <laughs> of me getting that second sock finished. Sometimes ripping out and doing it right is just the answer. So anyway, I have a finished pair of socks and these are nice and bright and happy. <coughs> Excuse me. And we lovely this winter when it's dark and gray here in the greater Pittsburgh area, <laughs> as it so often is in the winter. Um, I don't think I can tell you anything else. US1 needles, that's my default needle for um, fingering weight socks. So there we go. Um, I have, let's see, where's hat? Oh, I will say what I didn't work on. Um, the other project that I have on the go that you've seen before is my jukebox cardi that I'm knitting out of um, my fingering weight, my bedazzled fingering weight yarn. Um, I didn't take that with me on my trip and I haven't picked it up again since I've been home either. I didn't take it with me mainly because it involves having multiple balls of yarn attached to the project at one time and I just felt like that was a whole lot to have with me. Um, and tried to juggle while I was traveling and I didn't want to mess it up so I left that at home. I will get back to it though because I'd really like to finish that before I go to Stitches Midwest in the beginning of August which is less than a month away now. Um, anyway, but I did cast on some other projects and work on them and finished a couple of them so let's go to that. I have a hat. <laughs> this is the Riley Rose hat and that is a pattern by Jennifer Lassonde. She is the one who does the Down Solar Studio podcast and she is a talented designer as well. Uh, a couple years ago she came out with the Riley Rose shawl and so this is sort of a companion pattern that uses the same stitch motifs as is in the shawl. Um, I did do some modifications on this, some on purpose, some accidentally because I didn't read the directions right. Um, I chose to knit mine out of sport weight yarn rather than fingering weight. The only reason I did that is because I had a whole bunch of half skeins of um, Traveler the Traveler sport weight base hanging around and I thought I'm gonna use these. So that's what I did. I used um, Peacock Blue, Pumpkin, Orange, Lime Green, Wisp, and Lemon. Those are the five colors I used. Now her pattern does call for using five colors um, but the way she does hers is her fifth color isn't quite as prominent if I remember in the pattern. Her fifth color she uses as sort of like a single row in between each of the sections. I chose not to do that. Um, I just wanted to incorporate the fifth color in into the whole hat. So you start out with ribbing and then you go into the second section which is a slip stitch motif which is very cool except I totally misread how to do it and I was not holding my yarn to the front when I was slipping the stitches. I was holding it in the back for the first couple of rounds. And I'm like, this doesn't really look like anything. And then I reread it and realized what I was doing wrong. So I did end up correcting it here in the center. But then to keep it symmetrical because I wasn't ripping this back, um, I did some rounds up here where I just, I just knit. I didn't even do any slipping <laughs> of the stitches, I don't think. Um, and it's fine. Actually, did I? Oh, I did. I just slipped it in the back. So they're like kind of elongated stitches. So anyway, there's that. And then in her, in her pattern, she had, she was carrying the color up from this section up here into the stripes. So it would have still been the orange mixed with the next color. I decided to just do two totally different colors and I like it that way. So you're doing two rows stripes. I modified it by doing the wisp stripe I did in seed stitch. So those two rows um, I alternated knit, purl, knit, purl, and then purl, knit, purl, knit, just for a little added texture. It's really not even something you can see super well. You can see it more whenever you switch the color in, back um, from, the, from the green into the wisp because you get those pearl bumps that stand out. But it was just something I decided to do on the fly. Then you go up into this mesh lace part, which was great, except I totally flubbed that up. 
Um, my lace does not look like what it's supposed to look like, I don't think. But you know what? It's lace. It's fine. It's a super slouchy hat. You're not really going to be able to tell. Um, the next section is a broken rib section, which I feel like I must have done something weird on that because up here you're seeing a whole lot of just stock in it. I don't know. <sighs> and then your top part is just stock in it where you're doing your crown decreases. I did also modify it in the fact that I did not do each of the sections as many repeats or as many rows as the pattern had um, indicated just because the sport weight gives you a very different row gauge than fingering weight and this would have been like a really long hat <laughs> had I done all of the repeats. It is quite slouchy as it is. I'll try it on for you. Um, it's very jaunty if I wear it this way. <laughs> but anyway, so it's a super slouchy hat. I mean, lots and lots of slouch there. Um, but it, I think it'll be warm and it's definitely bright and happy and <laughs> it'll be fun for the winter. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to actually keep it or if I might gift it to someone. Um, but we'll see. It's fun and I'm happy with it and it used up some yarn that I had hanging around. Um, and it gave me a chance to knit another one of Jen's patterns and her patterns are always delightful to knit because they're very well written. So I can recommend that. Again, that was the Riley Rose hat by Jennifer Lassonde. Um, I knit this on, the ribbing was on 2.5, US 2.5s, and then the body of the hat was on US 3s. Um, which is probably, again, not what the pattern calls for, but that's because the pattern is being, the pattern is written for fingering weight. So there's that. Then I have another new cast on that is also a finished object and it's another pair of socks, though they are not regular socks, they are special socks. And this is a pattern by Sarah Bauer, who has the Yarns at Yin Hu podcast. And she has recently designed a pair of yoga socks. I have always wanted to knit a pair of yoga socks and just never have but now I have. <laughs> so these are my yoga socks. Aren't they cute? So the whole concept behind them is you're basically knitting a partial sock. It has no heel and it has no front of your foot because when you're doing yoga, you need to be able to grip your mat and these are the areas that most touch the, the mat. Um, but that just adds a little bit of warmth to your feet so that if you're in the warming up stages of your yoga practice or like me, I do mine out on the deck a lot in the summertime. And actually when I do it, it's still pretty chilly out some mornings. So these will be very nice to have. Um, this is a free pattern that Sarah put out. So that's very nice. Um, she's actually doing a knit along right now, the Yogi, Ka Yogi Sock Cal on Instagram. Um, well, I guess it's probably other places too, but that's where I've been using the hashtag. So if you want to jump in on that, these are a super quick knit. I literally probably did these in, I want to say a total of five hours, if that. Um, anyway, for as small a project as this is, I really modified it. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you about it. it. It looks identical to how hers look. Um, but how I executed it, I did it very differently than how, how her pattern was written, which seems odd. Um, number one, her stitch count options for hers were, I think, 56 stitches, 64 stitches, and 72 stitches, probably. Um, I prefer a 60 stitch sock, so I did mine 60 stitches, and um, that worked out just fine. She had you working from the front of the foot up to the cuff. I worked cuff down because I have a better um, track record of insert getting my heel in the correct place when I go in that direction. Um, although it actually would not have mattered for these because this was an afterthought heel construction. And again, I don't put waste yarn in. She wrote the pattern so that you're putting waste yarn in but I don't put waist yarn in, so it really wouldn't have mattered which direction I went on these. Um, I did 
two by one rib up here on the cuff rather than the one by one rib that she um, indicated in the pattern to do. Now, on this part, so I, okay, started here, I did about an inch of ribbing and then I knit, went into stockinette. I knew this was about where I was gonna be putting my heel in, so then this is the point where I started measuring down for the rest of the foot. Um, I knit about a half an inch and then started doing this part. The sole of the foot she does in one by one rib. This is an element that she puts in all of her sock patterns and I think it's really very creative. Um, it, it lets the socks pull in on you a little bit and give you a little extra support there um, where you might want it. Um, it uh, much the way some commercial athletic socks are created. So I thought that was a very cool detail. Um, so I did do that one by one rib on the sole. Um, rather than doing one by one rib here for the top of the foot though, once you got down to this bottom band, um, I continued my one by one rib out to the bottom on the bottom part, but I switched to two by one on the top for this last inch of the sock up here. And then when I was done with that, I did cut in my afterthought heel and I did, um, what did I do for ribbing here? I, yeah, I did two by one ribbing here as well along. You're not knitting any heel out, it's just some ribbing to give it stability on your heel. Oh, the other thing I did differently up here, I believe her sock is just a rolled cuff because she's working up and then she just binds off and doesn't do any ribbing up here. I'm not a huge fan of that rolled cuff. I don't, I always feel like it's gonna come off. So I did ribbing. Her sock pattern does not call for ribbing up here, I don't think. So basically I used her pattern for inspiration rather than following it, but I still really liked it. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you wanna knit yoga socks, I would suggest checking that pattern out. All right, I'm gonna sit those over there. So again, that was a uh, pattern by Sarah Jordan, even though I probably didn't really follow it. I never know if designers really care if you totally modify their patterns or not. Like as a designer myself, I don't care if people do that. I mean, if you're test knitting for me, I'd prefer you didn't do that for the test knit, but like if you buy my pattern or you're using a free pattern of mine and you wanna make it your own, make it your own. That's what it's all about. So hopefully Sarah doesn't mind that I totally did stuff differently on her pattern. <laughs> Okay, the only other thing I've got on the needles right now, besides the sweater that I have not worked on, I should say the only other thing that I've actively got on the needles is another new cast on that I did take with me to TNNA. And I took this along specifically for hotel room knitting because it um, was a little bit more involved and also involved more than one ball of yarn, and that is a shift cowl. So this is the Andrea Mallory pattern, the shift, which was her first shift pattern. She's now got a shawl and a hat and a sweater that are all along those same shift themes. Um, <clears throat> so this is mine. I'm using Stonehenge, Stonehenge Fiber Mill Crazy Skeins, which I purchased earlier this year at Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet, or Pittsburgh Fiber Arts Festival, whatever they're calling it these days. Um, I picked up three different skeins the whole concept of those skeins is they're all very different and so um, within the skein, the skein itself, it just changes colors as you go through. So that's making this a very interesting project because the instructions for this cowl um, have you switching skeins throughout at different points so that your colors change, but my colors are already changing all on their own. So I really have not been following that part of the pattern. Go figure, I'm not following a pattern. <laughs> um, I've just been, I did switch at one point. I switched balls, I think, but then I switched back. I don't remember now, it's been too long. Um, but you can see how the colors are changing. This is a mosaic pattern, so it's not actual color work. You're just doing slipped stitches to get that color work effect in there. Um, I'm almost to, I think, section five, maybe. Um, I totally messed up section four. I, I don't know what I did. I deviated from the directions, but at this point, Point, I know the concept of what's happening. So I'm actually not, 
Again, surprise! I'm not actually paying attention to the pattern now. I'm just paying attention to when I hit certain um, stitch count points that are in the pattern because there will come a point where I have to stop increasing and I need to start decreasing and then there comes the point where you're doing where you'll connect it because this let's see can I even show you where is it hmm <laughs> okay wait I have to find it so I can show you correctly here it is okay so this part right here you see how this is a straight edge like from here on down this will be the back of the cowl the top back and over here as this well not here but over here as this grows out there will be another point over here that's like that as well if i'm understanding it correctly and eventually you'll connect the two and then you'll wear it I'll wear it like this I think I think that's how this is gonna go I'm having a hard time wrapping my my brain around the construction of this but I'm just going with it <laughs> even though I'm modifying how I'm knitting well I'm not really modifying I'm just kind of doing my own thing based on on the the pattern the patterning in the pattern um, the other cool thing about this is it's got an integrated I cord edging I really like that. That's very neat. And I think it looks really pretty. It's very colorful the way the strands are since you're alternating strands every two rows. Um, anyway, I'm having fun with it even though I'm really not knitting it the way it's supposed to be knit. But again, because these skeins are literally so crazy and the color changes are so wacky, um, I don't think it really matters. I am glad I'm doing this project first because if I do decide to do either the shawl or I don't know that I'll do the sweater ever, but like if I want to do the shawl or the hat or something, then I'll at least know how this operates and have a better idea. But the two balls I'm working with right this moment are these. This one I think is this way the whole rest of the way. It started out as this dark blue background color and then it's turned into this. I think this one only had those two colors. Both of my other balls though have a lot of different colors. So you can kind of see there's like some sort of a minty green underneath there coming up after these. And then my third ball is this one, which has some green and yellow under there. Is that, oh, that's blue and yellow. Isn't that interesting how blue and yellow makes green, but visually sometimes it can even look like green. Anyway, so that's what's going on. <laughs> I'm having fun with it. Um, again, it was just, I worked on it in the hotel room and I've worked on it since I've been home using US 5 needles. Um, and it's, I'm working on it out of my um, Turned Studios wooden yarn bowl that I got from the Woolly Thistle a while back. I love this yarn bowl. I, I have some pottery yarn bowls. I don't use them as often, but I love this yarn bowl. I use it all the time when I'm working from a hand wound ball, which I don't do super often, but I did hand wind these balls in my hotel room. I also hand wound all of the yarn balls that I used in that hat that I showed you. So it's very meditative. <laughs> <coughs> okay, I'm gonna take another drink of coffee. That's all the knitting. I do have some spinning. I finished the um, Classy Squid Fiber Company yarn that I was spinning that I did up for socks. So this is the Opulence Fiber that I bought from Amanda at Needles Up Rhinebeck last year in the Bistro Mathix colorway. I spun this and plied it as a traditional three ply and I got 500 yards out of the four ounces. Now that's 500 yards before it's been soaked. I haven't soaked it yet. So it will puff up and the yardage will get a little shorter, but it's definitely a fingering weight yarn. Um, and my whole purpose for spinning this was for socks. I intentionally spun it for socks. Um, and as such, I also had to be very mindful when I was plying because I have a tendency to ply sort of loosely, but because I wanted this to be structurally um, compatible for socks, I was trying to be very mindful about spinning it um, tighter or plying it more tightly. 
And I think I did a pretty good job. Um, it took forever <laughs> to ply this much, but honestly, I, I'm very happy with how it turned out. It, the fiber, I can't remember the, it has, mm, I think it's a combination of merino, cashmere, bamboo, and silk. I think, I don't remember the amounts, but those all, that's the fiber makeup. The bamboo and the silk, I think, will help make it stronger, even though it doesn't have any nylon in it. So between that and the fact that it's a three-ply, um, a tightly twisted three-ply, I, I think will make it good for socks. I mean, this is tightly twisted for me. You might be looking at it thinking, oh my gosh, look how loose your ply is. But it's definitely more tightly plied than most of my yarn. <laughs> so anyway, that is finished and I can't wait to actually get that soaked and then cast on a pair of socks with that. I don't know what socks I'll do. I mean, there's so much color in here. I think just plain stockinette or ribbed socks would probably be great, but I could also do monkey socks because I've done monkey socks before with crazy sock yarns and they look pretty cool. So I don't know. We'll see what I decide to do. But now that that's off the wheel, um, I am, oh, sorry, I am all actively working on my um, fiber exchange and spin along spinning. So this is the fiber that my partner sent to me. Um, that's Trisha. So this is some Highland Handmaids um, Pitch Pine Top. Let's see. Yep, this is the one she sent me. Pitch Pine Top in what colorway is it? Wild Love. So pretty colors. So I'm working on the singles for that. So that's my wheel project. And then I also have another spinning project going on, on a drop spindle. And that is on my, a very classy spindle from, also from Classic Squid, Classy Squid Fiber Company. Um, and I have started to spin the cuttlefish bats that I purchased at Needles Up Maryland this year from Amanda. Um, I showed these to you several weeks ago now. I bought, I believe, three cuttlefish bats and two braids of blue, really deep sea blue um, Shetland fiber. My plan is to, my original plan was to do a three ply. This would be one ply and the blue fiber would be two plies, but I'd really like to get as much yardage as possible out of this for hopefully a sweater. So I think I may just do a two ply. One of this would be one ply, the blue would be another ply, and then I'll have extra blue, um, which I'll just ply together. And so some part of the sweater will just be solid blue. I haven't completely figured that out, but that is my plan at the moment. <laughs> so we'll see. But I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Um, I've got a lot on here already. Here's the bat that I'm working with. It's so fluffy, but look at all these colors. This is just so yummy. And honestly, I'm just tearing chunks off of this. I'm not stripping it down or doing anything fancy with it. I'm just tearing little chunks off of it and spinning it because the colors are just so crazy anyway. Um, this is working just fine. And I'm really enjoying it. And I can't wait to get some of that lime green in there. I think I have some, but you just can't see it right now. So anyway, I know this isn't going to focus super close up, but anyway, I'm enjoying it. I have it just sitting in my bedroom. This is not something I can do anywhere where there's cats because they think, oh, fun, let's play. <laughs> so I have to do it when I'm in the bedroom. Um, so I just go in there a few times a day and I'll stand there and spin for like maybe 15 minutes. It will take me forever. Um, to get it done that way, but it's fine because it's a long-term progress process, a long-term project anyway. Um, I'm not sure how much fiber I can get on to this drop spindle. That's one of my quandaries with drop spindles. I'm never quite sure how much to put on. I mean, I've definitely got enough on here now that there's so much weight on here that this spindle is not spinning super long like it was um, in the earlier stages. Um, it's still spinning well, just not super long, but that's par for the course with any spindle I've ever used. The more weight you get on it with the fiber, with the singles, the slow, the less time it will spin for you. You have to keep flicking it, you know. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. 
like I said, I got two other shafts whenever I got this. Um, cause they're sold with a set of three shafts. Um, so once I feel like I have enough on here, I'll switch one out and put a new one on and keep going. <laughs> so that's my spinning. Um, speaking of spinning, Tour de Fleece does start this week on the 6th, which I think is that Saturday. I'm pretty sure it's Saturday. Don't hold me to that, but if today's the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, yeah, that would be Saturday. Um, I'm not planning on officially participating in Tour de Fleece. I haven't in several years now. Wow, do my windows look dirty. <laughs> Sorry. I just realized how bad that looks, but this window, these windows are really hard to clean because they're up off the ground and I have to use like a really long handled thing or else get up on a ladder and haven't done that this year, clearly. Sorry. Ignore it. Look at me. No. Um, anyway, Tour de Fleece. Yeah, I haven't actively participated in Tour de Fleece in so <coughs> several years. And I'm not really going to this year either. I'm just going to spin what I'm already spinning since I've got these two projects on the wheel and on the spindle. <coughs> I also realize I still have my my fleece project that I started last year that I haven't touched in ages. I should probably get back to that too. But really my top priority spinning project is the one on the wheel since that's for the fiber exchange and spin along in our group. So that's probably what I'm going to be focusing on the most. Okay. Um, speaking of other things going on in the group, <coughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I have such a tickly throat all of a sudden. Um, I have a prize for Whipstravaganza, a prize winner to announce for Whipstravaganza. Um, I did a May and June prize drawing. We had posts, um, from post 99 to 126 were all posts that were posted in that thread, um, May and June. So I did random number generator for that number range and came up with number 111, and that was a post by Manda B. So congratulations, Manda B. Please P or yeah, PM me on Ravelry. Let me know what pattern or patterns you would like that are giftable to you through Ravelry up to a $10 limit. And I will gift those to you as your prize. So thank you so much for participating. Again, the Whipstravaganza thread will be open all throughout 2019. Um, because people are finishing off whips that had been on the needles since before 2019, I realize chatter isn't quite as effusive as it was earlier in the year. So I will, again, do the prize drawings once there's enough posts in there to warrant a prize drawing. So about every two months, we'll see how it goes. I want there to at least be like a dozen posts before I do a prize drawing. So we'll see how that goes, but please continue to post there if you're working on longer term projects that were started prior to the beginning of this year. Um, I wanted to let you know about uh, another knit along that I'm going to be starting in the group as of August 1st. And that one will be a couple months long. It will run until October 18th, which is the Friday prior to Rhinebeck. And I'm calling it, that's your cue, Cal, Q-Q-U-E-U-E, -E, not C-U-E. Um, and the premise for this cow, and it, cow meaning knit along or crochet along in this case, um, is to knit or crochet something that you've had in your queue, your Ravelry queue, for a long time and you've just never gotten to it. Now, I realize that not everybody uses their cue the way I do. Like anything I see, any pattern that I know, oh, I really like that, maybe I wanna knit that someday, I put it into my cue. My cue is many pages long. I know some people only put things in their cue if they're planning on casting them on in the imminent future. Um, but for the sake of this cow, that's why I'm telling you about it now so you can maybe plan. Um, I decided that this would be a great time if you've got maybe a sweater that you want to make for Ravelry and you know it's been in your queue and you want to get it on the needles. If it's not there now, stick it in your queue now. Because for the, the only qualification for this knit along is that the project or projects that you submit as finished objects have to have been in your queue prior to the start of the knit along. So prior to August 1st. Once you cast them on, leave it in your queue because that way whenever I draw winners, 
um, I will check your queue to make sure it was actually queued. The queuing date was prior to August 1st. So it still has to be in your queue. Don't delete it from there. Um, I don't think patterns automatically delete when you cast them on from your queue. At least that's been my experience. Um, at any rate, make sure it's still in your queue once it's cast on so that I can verify that date. Because that's the only criteria. It doesn't matter what the project is. If you want to do a sweater for Rhinebeck, great. That might be an excellent project for you since you've got like two and a half months to do it. Maybe you want to get a jump on your holiday gift knitting. Fabulous. You've got two and a half months. You can do as many as you want. The way we're going to work finished objects for this cal is you're going to post a new post in the finished object thread every time you finish a project. So you're basically going to be able to put as many entries in as you're able to with finished objects from queued items. I will talk more about this closer to that time, but I just wanted to give you the heads up about it now so that if you are one of those people who does not use your queue as a wish list of things to knit, um, you can maybe think about what you might want to knit during that two and a half month period and add those patterns to your queue now so that they will count. Because like I said, as long as it was in your queue prior to August 1st, it could be July 31st, it doesn't matter. As long as it's in there before August 1st, it will count for the knit along. So that's going to be the that's your cue cow. <laughs> um, what else? Summer of Us. We still have the Summer of Us group happening. That's going to be up all through the summer. Um, feel free to chatter. I don't think there's been a lot of chatter in there lately, but if you want to tell us what's going on, where are you going on vacation? What are you doing? Are you having a staycation? Are you having a makecation at home? Um, anything, you know, what are you doing? Maybe you're going out on your deck first thing in the morning before the kids are awake and you're getting some knitting time in, or maybe you're reading a really good summertime beach read, whatever it is. Are, have you found a new podcast that you're enjoying this summer? Whatever. Please share it in that group. I would love to hear about it and I'm sure other people would too. Um, for my part, um, my kombucha is doing okay. I thought it maybe had died and wasn't going to survive, um, but I checked it the other day and I do actually have a new scoby growing on the top. So I'm really happy about that. I probably should um, drain it off and do a new batch soon so I can do the second fermentation and what I've got now. Um, I just haven't had a chance to, but I need to do that soon. <laughs> So that's happening. I've been using my herbs that are planted out here that you can't see through my dirty windows because the sun's shining anyway. It's more the sun than the dirt that's keeping you from seeing my potted plants. <laughs> but I've been using those in my cooking, which is lovely. And something else I decided to add to my Summer of Me that I've been enjoying is I downloaded the Babbel app. Um, the language learning app, and I am doing a refresher in French. <laughs> I learned, uh, well, I took French in high school for four years, and then I did two years of it in college as well. So I'm not new to French, but it's been a very long time since I've done anything with I'm by no means fluent in French at all. Um, but we're going to Canada for vacation this fall. We're going to Quebec. And while I realize that French speaking in French in France is very different than French speaking in Canada, I think it's more of a dialect difference than like, you know, vocabulary or grammar difference. Um, I figure it probably can't hurt for me to at least you know, get a refresher um, with basic syntax and sentence structure and vocabulary. Um, and it's just, it's actually been fun because it's kind of given my brain a workout in a new way that I don't often do. So I have been enjoying using the Babbel app. Um, I did sign up for it for a few, I think it's like three months or something maybe. I did um, the membership so I can keep doing the lessons. So yeah, I thought that's fun. So, yay, France, French. Oui. <laughs> All right. That's everything in 90%. Um, 10%, uh, let's see what's been going on. Family. I told you that I've had family in town. My grandson was up in town 
he was actually here for a couple of weeks. I only got to see him one day for a few hours, unfortunately, but that's just how it worked out between my schedule and his schedule. Um, but it was great to get to see him. He's 14. How'd that happen? But he's a wonderful young man and has such a great sense of humor and he's just so smart and just funny. I was telling him, we didn't get to come up here to the mountain house. We were out in my old neck of the woods. Um, but I was telling him about the fact that we had all these baby fish when we came back from our last trip. Um, we had all these little baby fishies in the aquarium and, you know, told him how we had to get them out and everything. And he's like, can you sterilize fish? <laughs> like, I have no idea, but like, where did that question even come from? Like, that's not the question I would have expected from my 14 year old grandson. But then we ended up Googling the subject at dinner. So it was really sort of funny. And I don't think we ever came up with an answer, but it like went from there to all kinds of other topics that it was just like, oh my gosh, you are too funny. So anyway, I got to see him. And then yesterday, I got to see my mom and my aunt, which this was also a really last minute kind of thing. Um, my They both came up into town for a 90th birthday party for one of their cousins. Um, the party was this past weekend and so they came up and they both stayed um, out in Pittsburgh with their cousin who was having, the party was four. I was not going to this party because it's just an end of the family that I've really never spent a lot of time with and it was a couple hours away and just it would have been a lot of driving so it was sad because we're like I'm like you know you go and spend time with your family this is people you grew up with it would be great for you to do that um, don't worry I mean I just saw her a couple times this year already anyway and they're gonna be up here for Christmas but then we were both kind of feeling that we weren't going to get to see each other when she was up here this close. So then I asked her, I'm like, well, what time does your plane leave on Monday? And she said, oh, it leaves around three. I'm like, well, can I come pick you up and take you to the airport? We could go to lunch first. She's like, yes, that would be awesome. So that's what I did. I picked both her and my aunt up yesterday. Their, their flights were both leaving around the same time. My aunt lives in Texas. My mom's in Florida. But their flights both left around the same time. So I picked them up and we went and had a nice leisurely lunch. And then I took them to the airport. So at least I got to spend a few hours with them. That's better than no hours, right? Oh, so anyway, that was a really fun surprise to get to do that. Um, other than that, I have spent a couple of hours restacking firewood, which isn't that exciting. <laughs> It actually is exciting because we have a huge firewood pile. Um, we used a lot of it the last couple of years, but we've still got more. But a lot of it fell over this past year um, during the winter. So I went out and spent two afternoons restacking firewood, which felt so good. Very physical activity. It was very hot and sunny, so I did a lot of sweating, but it felt good to be out there moving. There's a lot of wood down in these woods that still from when we cut these trees down when we put this building up out here a couple years ago um, that still needs to be split so that's next on my agenda I'm going to hopefully start doing that I just have to learn how to start our log splitter <laughs> I'm not sure I can do that um, and other than that the only other thing coming up is my husband and I are going to vintage motorcycle days this weekend out in Mansfield, Ohio, or Lexington, Ohio. I think they're very close cities and I've seen both of them listed for this particular event. Anyway, um, it's, we're gonna be camping. I'm not sure which motorcycle I'm taking yet. I have to decide that and I also need to pack for it. Um, but we'll be out there Friday and Saturday then we'll drive home Sunday morning because then we're going to the Weird Al concert Sunday night. Um, the Weird Al, his current concert series is Strings Attached, where he's performing with symphonies. So he's performing with the Pittsburgh Symphony. Um, so we're looking forward to that. So that's going to be our holiday weekend. Um, and that's pretty much everything. I do have shop news, however, as well as prize winners for the June monthly makes that I'm going to announce. So if you're going to stick around for that, I will see you in just a minute. If you're not, then I totally We'll just say goodbye to you now and I'll see you next time I record. I'm not sure when that will be, but um, whenever it is, I'll see you then. So hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, shop news. I'm gonna start by announcing winners for the monthly makes for June. And we're gonna talk about monthly makes for a little bit since we are now in the second half of the year. So I'll let you know where that stands with everything. But I wanna show you the prizes first that you can choose if you're one of the winners. 
for the June monthly makes. So the first one is a color block gradient in the color play number one colorway. I realize I've not come out with color play number two yet, but inspiration for it has not yet struck. So stay tuned. Eventually I'll have a color play number two, but this was color play number one on the bedazzled fingering weight base. Um, and that is one of the prizes. Sorry, they're behind me on the chair. <laughs> Another prize option is a two skein project set in worsted weight. So this is my cozy weight base. Um, this is the Forged in Fire colorway, which is a orangey yellow variegated and speckled gradient, or not gradient, variegated and speckled colorway, and soft black. So those go together. So 220 yards each. Um, so that is another prize option. And then because this is Tour de Fleece Month, I thought I'd throw in a fiber prize as one of the options. And so there's this braid of Polworth silk top in the rhodochrosite and denim color combination. So that is a third prize choice. So I'm going to announce the two winners. If you're one of them, please PM me on Ravelry and let me know your top two prize choices along with your mailing information and I will get this stuff out to you. So for the June chatter thread, we had posts 500 through 618 and random number generator chose post number 518 and that was by Seductive Berry who is Maria. So Maria, congratulations. Um, please PM me with your top two prize choices and your mailing address even though I know I have it because you have won several times. Um, but give it to me anyway, it just makes it easier. <laughs> All right, so congratulations, Maria. Um, the finished object thread, which it's funny, I realized a while ago that I hadn't actually said I was gonna do monthly winners from the finished objects thread. I don't know why I started doing it. I guess I just assumed, like, I just didn't think about it. So I've been doing it. I'm going to continue to do it, but I just thought it was funny. It's like, huh, that wasn't even one of the things I was planning to do in this monthly makes program. Whatever. So we had posts 2 through 13 for the June finished objects thread. And random number generator chose post number 3, and that is Christina4635. So Christina, congratulations. Please PM me with your top two prize choices and your mailing information as well. So that brings us to the fact that June is now over, which means the first half of the year is over, which means the first part of earning your free skein of yarn has now come to a close because you have the chance to earn two free skeins of yarn this year of your choice of colorway. And um, for the first... For each six months, you needed to have completed at least 100 grams of qualifying finished objects um, five out of the six months. So for January through June, five out of the six months, everybody got June as a freebie month because I started the program kind of late. So Jan January was a freebie month. Did I say June? January was a freebie month for that first half of the year. So you really only had to complete four out of five months. So I'm going to read the list of people who have met that qualification. And you can then PM me on Ravelry and let me know what you would like um, as your free skein of yarn. It can be a skein of yarn. Whatever base, let me know what base and what colorway. It can be any of my regular colorways, which means nothing that's been, that's an exclusive colorway. And there are some colorways that I have taken out of rotation for the foreseeable future. So if you ask me for one of those, I may have to let you know I'm not dying those right now. I apologize in advance if that's the case because... I don't have the, that a list of those out there anywhere, but there's various and sundry reasons that there are some that I take out of rotation occasionally. Um, so I'll let you know. Hopefully we'll still be able to find something that you want. But anyway, it can be a skein of yarn. It can be a set of inversibles. It can be a braid of fiber. Let me know what kind of fiber you want and what kind of color. Or it can be a mini skein set. I'd be happy to do like five 20 gram mini skeins for you in a certain color combination. If you want it based on a colorway or if you have ideas of what you want, let me know and we can work it through. 
Okay, so the first half of the year free skein winners are, or earners, you've really earned them. Seductive Berry, PA Nitwit, Christina4635, RJ Hugs, Safe54, Leaner, Will Travel for Yarn, Grable, Ms. Melody, Pepper RN, Jenny B82, Muckle Poo 1986, I Own a Paint, Manda B, and Leslie 529. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much for participating. And I can't wait to get your free yarn and or, well, free yarn or fiber out to you. Um, I'll look forward to hearing from each of you. I have also updated the Grand Grams table at the top of the chatter thread. So that has been updated to include the June Grams. That's an ongoing thing throughout the year. And I just want to point out, for the Grand Grams, you don't have to participate every single month with finished objects. That's just a completely, um, that's total grams, period. Um, so that's open all year long. And also, if you did not participate in the first six months, but you want to participate in the last six months of the year and earn a free skein at the end of the year, you're welcome to do that. You don't have to have participated um, in the first six months to do the second six months. However, if you do both six months period and qualify five out of the six months for both halves of the year, you also will earn the um, exclusive colorway that I'm going to be offering for the people who met that qualification. Hi guys, it's future Lisa popping in here because I was editing the podcast and I realized I left out a very important monthly makes detail that I needed to share with you. I did add this to the thread in the Ravelry group yesterday, but I wanted to make sure that those of you who are participating in the monthly makes program or are planning to for the remainder of the year knew about this. Um, I am offering you guys a coupon code that's good now through the 9th of July, so about a week. Um, for 20% off anything that's in stock in my shop, and that does include the sweater sets that are in there. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a thank you for participating in the program and give you a chance to maybe add some additional Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn to your stash so that you can continue with the program if you want to, um, and to give you a price break on that. So if you'd like to take advantage of that, the coupon code is MONTHLYMAKERS. Um, all ran together one word monthly makers and that will give you 20% off anything that is in stock in the shop um, now through next Tuesday the 9th so I hope that helps you guys out um, and if you have any questions or any problems with the coupon code there was a glitch with it early on but I think I've got that worked out um, if you have any questions feel free to email me fiberinf at gmail.com um, but anyway just needed to let you know that since I apparently forgot to tell you that during the regular recording. So, and yes, this is my serious editing the podcast look. <laughs> also known as my hair was driving me crazy and I just needed to get it out of my face look. So, anyway, okay, back to the podcast. Um, let's see, I wanted to let you know that the Just Desserts um, self-striping yarn club signups are still going on through this Friday morning at 9 a.m. There are three spots left as of right now. So if you would like to sign up, please feel free to do that. And um, I'd love to have you. You can access that information on the FiberNymphDyeWorks.com website. Click on Just Desserts up at the very top in the menu or on the banner on the, the main page. That's usually the first banner that will come up. Um, and that will take you to the information page with all of the details about the club as well as a link to the sign up form. Okay, I will be updating the shop. Um, this isn't like, I'm not doing like a huge update update where I'm telling you when it'll be. By the time this video is up, this stuff should be up in the shop. So I'm just gonna show you real quick. I'm not even gonna show you absolutely everything because there's a lot of fiber. <laughs> But, and I don't think I even brought it all in here, but I do have some yarn and I, I want to tell you about that because I'm really excited about this, this new colorway. It's one new colorway um, in a couple of different iterations. Um, you know I have my, my Mountain House Seasons series. So Mountain House Summer, Mountain House Spring, Mountain House Winter, Mountain House Autumn. 
I've had those for a couple of years now. They've always been really popular, but I'm constantly being inspired for new colorways um, based on where I live because I love where I live. It's a beautiful area. And in a lot of ways, I feel like it's a very magical area just with the forest and the creatures and just the general vibe of living up here is amazing to me, which is good because I live here, right? <laughs> But anyway, I've had this idea for a while and I finally did the first colorway for it. I'm going to do um, the Mountain Sprites series. So Mountain Sprites is going to be a collection of colorways um, that are a bit imaginative. Um, and the first one I'm doing is Summer Fairy. Now I'm not sure that all of these will be seasonally related, but I think a lot of them probably will be. Um, or at least some of them will be, but this one is. So Summer Fairy is the first of the Mountain Sprites colorway series, and this is it. I did it both in a self-striping and a variegated and speckled version. So the self-striping has five colors in it. Well, actually here, I'll show them to you because I also did up minis. So the stripes in that self-striping are these five colors. So we've got wisp and a purple lime, um, a woody sandy kind of brown, and this light bright aqua. So those are the colors in that. Um, it stripes up so that the wisp stripe is in between each of the other colors as they progress. So Again, self-striping, and I'm going to have the self-striping on Bounce, Bedazzled, and Mountain Tweed available for this right now. I will probably do it on some heavier weight yarns like Traveler and either Cozy or um, Bonafide coming up in the future, but for right now I just have it on the fingering weight bases. Um, the variegated and speckled version is on Sunshine right now. Um, I may do it on a couple of other bases as well here. I want to just wind it up in a different way to show you all of the colors. I just, I love how these colors look. And then I have mini sets. Um, I did up a couple of mini sets in um, Bounce and Bedazzled. So those will be in the shop. By the time you see this video, they will be in the shop. Additionally, I did some sock blanks. It's been forever since I've dyed sock blanks. I'm not sure I'm going to continue to dye sock blanks forever and ever, um, but I do want to use up my inventory of sock blanks that I've got. So I did up some sock blanks that are um, the fireworks ones that I've done in the past. I don't think I did any last year. So I've got these big fireworks. Um, on some sock blanks. I did these both on speckled or on sparkle and non-sparkle sock blanks. So there's those. And then I also did, and I thought these were so much fun, some little flowers. I'm calling these the crazy daisies sock blanks in these colors. And these are also on sparkle and non-sparkle sock blanks. Each of these, the hand painted design sock blanks are each going to come with a semi-solid mini skein um, that you could use if you wanted to do heels or toes or cups or whatever. Um, it'll be the color of my choice that I'm going to pair up with your sock blank. So just know it'll be one of these four colors. Um, I can't promise which one you'll get because it depends on which one is on which base that goes with which blank. Um, but you will be getting that as a bonus with your sock blank if you get one of either the fireworks or the crazy daisy sock blanks. These other sock blanks, it'll just be sock blanks. Um, I only have one of these, but this was super fun to do and I might do more of these if you guys like them or like this one. This was just a really fun technique I was playing with to do. Um, it's very random and very um, intense colors. So I have one of these that'll be in the shop. And then I have a couple that are a bit more subtle. Um, I've got this turquoise blue and lime greeny kind of random and speckled. And I believe I have this also on um, sparkle and non-sparkle and then also a purple, a different bunch of purples. 
similarly. So that is sock blanks. So those were fun to do. Like I said, it's been quite a while since I've done anything with sock blanks. Lastly, I have a ton of fiber for you. <clears throat> and I just have it all in a, actually I don't think this is all of it <laughs> to tell you the truth, but I've got a lot of fiber, a lot of fiber on a lot of different bases. Um, obviously when I take pictures of them for the shop, they'll be individual, but I just brought them out here. I mean, some of these, I just love these color combinations. They are making me so very, very happy. This one in particular, this one you're going to see more of. This is going to be turned into a yarn colorway for a specific purpose. Um, so that's coming up. This one. The Merlot is in that one. Got some magenta in there. Anyway, lots of fun fiber. Um, and because Tour de Fleece is happening i wanted to offer you a coupon code if you just want to buy fiber um 15 off any fiber purchase in the shop with the coupon code tour 15 so t-o-u-r-1-5 will give you 15 percent off any fiber in the shop if you're already using another coupon code you can't use both of them so you need to pick or choose which one you want to use um, based on what will give you the better deal but that 15 percent off is just on fiber the tour 15 is just for the fiber okay i think that's everything um i wanted to tell you for going in the shop the only other thing i wanted to let you know is i have started a blog on my website there's only one really quick little um welcome kind of post up there right now but i'm hoping to use that sort of as an extension of the podcast. Um, I'm not looking to, well, I'm sure I'll use it to like let you know about things that are going on and stuff like that. But additionally, I want it to be a way for me to share stories with you um, and photos and things like that that I can't really go into depth in the podcast on. Um, so we'll see where that goes. I've got ideas for it, but I wanted to let you know that it's up there and hopefully it will continue to grow soon. So as always, though, you can always find me on Instagram at either my private account, which is at FiberNymph, or the business account, which is at FiberNymph Dye Works. Um, there's the Ravelry group, FiberNymph Dye Works. There's the FiberNymph Dye Works page on Facebook. And there is my newsletter, which you can sign up for on um the website and yeah i think that that covers everything <laughs> the website fibernymphdyeworks.com have a lovely rest of your week again if you're going to be celebrating the fourth of july please have a lovely time and do it safely and i will see you again soon um whenever i can get back to recording so talk to you soon bye